Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you, you, you come from, to the to the My Data community meeting here in Amsterdam and obviously online. I, I have to say that there are 40 people attending in person in uh, in Amsterdam, but uh, nearly 200 on uh, online overall. So uh, so it's a great. Um, so it's a great success. Well, sorry you 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 can't be here in uh, in Amsterdam, but hopefully in June in in Helsinki uh, we'll be able to to meet most uh, most of you. Hopefully the the COVID crisis will be well not behind us, but at least managed. Um, well, I, I wanted to 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 maybe position very quickly our our panel today. Uh, we are here at the meeting of My Data Global. Uh, but obviously, we're in Amsterdam. We we are we are in Finland. Uh, I'm French, living in living in Brussels, etc. And when we say my data global, obviously, all of you prove that my data is already present on all the continents. But with with uh, with Jay, with Dixon, with with all the team, we, we thought it was really important to to start a series. Since we are my data global, start a series about uh, the global majority. Uh, uh, because you, you guys are going to represent, well, already you are a majority. By 2100, you will be 88% of the world uh, population. So we, we decided to, to, to create a series to, to really enhance and, and, and put structure to the, to the dialogues so to understand how the My Data uh, Declaration uh, can, can, can work. In, in all geographies, but also learn from your experience. I think that's what is very important um, on, of your experience, of the, of the background, of the realities, both uh, uh, societal, economical, uh, political, uh, and also hopefully uh, help the My Data Declaration, which is not, which is not a, a set in stone uh, we we didn't have, well, even though yogi may have long hair we, we didn't we didn't have a moses you know coming with the tables of the lord saying well this is how it has to be for the next 2000 years um so uh, that's it in, in a nutshell so i would like to 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 welcome uh dorothy Mukasa. uh we, we've got a great panel with uh, with dorothy and i'm i'm really impressed by what she's she's doing in in uganda we have also muchiri nyaga uh, here and we've got uh, Marcel Gounou and obviously our Charlie Marcel Gounou. So may I ask uh, the, the, the four of you to, to introduce your, yourself first and then we'll, we'll kick in with, uh, with the dialogue and, and questions. Maybe uh, Dorothy, do you want to, to start and, and saying well who you are and, uh, and, and your, your organization and, and basically quickly what you, what you work on? Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Dorothy Mkasa. I am the team lead at Unwanted Witness. Unwanted Witness is a digital rights organization that works at the intersection of technology and human rights. For the past nine years, we've been working on issues of uh, data protection, privacy as part of a program, looking at uh, defending people and their identity from, from uh, powers of companies and governments. Uh, we also work on issues of freedom of expression on the internet. Uh, we uh, work on issues of gender and technology. We also have programs around Amplified. Amplified is, um, you know, connecting the unconnected. Uh, we, we realize that there's so many you know, human rights defenders in the countryside who do tremendous work, but the work never gets to be known by the world, and therefore we try to connect to the to connect them on different platforms, build uh, websites, and and and, and uh, ensure that their work is visible and they can um, better mobilize uh, with their peers. And so uh, this is work that we've done for the last nine years. I'm happy to say that uh, we've been. Uh, and the forefront of, uh, in, of, of having a data protection law uh, for Uganda that was passed in 2019. But we are the stage of enforcement. We, are also, we also have a platform, an annual platform that we call the Privacy Symposium Africa that brings together different actors to, uh, to share practices and policies when it comes to protection of people and their data on the, on the internet. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Well, uh, happy that you can uh, 
can make it indeed. Uh, Marcel, ladies first. So, do you want to, to kick in? Yes. Okay. Hello. I hope you can hear him. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. loud and clear. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I am Arsene Gunu. So I'm a member of the Afro leadership team. So I'm 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 mainly working on policy regarding uh, gender related to STEMs. So um, and also really passionate about uh, digital uh, digital rights for children. So that's my two core activities. Thank you. Thank you, Ma Marcel. Uh, Muchiri, do you do you want to to kick in? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. Mushiri um, Nyaga is my name. I work with the Local Development Research Institute. We're based in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, we're six years old, turning seven, so we're fairly young in the broader scheme of things. Uh, and um, at a broad level, we see ourselves as supporting efforts of African countries um, around practical, evidence-informed actions to end hunger, poverty, and inequality. And because our focus is around practical evidence-informed actions, we tend to be very heavy on data from, an, from an, uh, a policy and an advocacy perspective. Um, and also we are very focused on African contextual responses to development challenges. So our point of departure tends to be what are the priorities that these African countries are putting forward um, and how can we support that country respond better to its own challenges um, from a data perspective. So there are three things we look at in our work. We look at the enabling environment, we look at sustainable financing for data, and, uh, and of course we look at human capital development. So um, we, we currently um, have two practices, one on data, one on food security, but our data practice uh, is uh, mostly working in two areas, op open data, which uh, we formed the Africa Open Data Network a few years ago. Uh, that has been quite a learning experience. Uh, it, didn't, uh, it took a different direction from how it, it had been envisioned initially, but uh, we've been able to influence a few countries here and there, and we're looking at a revamp of the work starting in 2022. So Charlie, look out. Uh, we are working on uh, artificial intelligence. It's a big area of uh, work now that is starting um, and the concerns around data privacy, uh, data protection and the protection of rights um, uh, based on algorithms uh, and the risk of, um, of, of ungoverned algorithm spaces. So those are, that's a short version of the number of things that we do. I'm happy to be here uh, among friends. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Happy that you could uh, you could make it. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, our international Charlie, uh, whom I had pleasure to uh, <laughs> had the pleasure to have uh, lunch with. Thank him you, Eric. Uh, Thank uh, you. Couple of weeks back. And I, I wanted to say before you speak, uh, <laughs> Charlie, I wanted to say that I'm very happy because we've both we've got both English speaking and French speaking uh, African. To, to to me, that's that's very important that we move out of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, separations which uh, which uh, which are well completely um, artificial because we've got a, a vibrant uh, continent with uh, with Africa. So please, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Eric. I was very very happy to be you in person, you know, in Brussels last last week, I think, and. Um, very happy to be here and to re-meet Mushiri because it, I think it's it's long time and even uh, Dorothy. <laughs> we met somewhere maybe in Tanzania three, four years ago. And uh, so very happy to re-meet you. And Marcel too, Marcel Ngunu. I'm Charlie Ngunu. And at times people will ask, <laughs> who is Marcel and who is Charlie? And then uh, we are just at Afro Leadership and Afro Leadership was founded several years back and working on, uh, when we started, it was really, really talking of leadership as, uh, you know, this soft skills power that, you know, that, that oil that can make things work. And so we turned to 
we were forced to to jump into this space of open data at first and that's where i met uh, mushiri as we we were reflecting on this issue around data and scarcity of data in africa and around data revolution report and, and all those stuff and today i think when i look at what mushiri and dorothy said in their introduction we do most of those things you know data privacy uh, at my data data economy you know looking at how data might free my flow freely, but securely in, uh, in every context, you know, and also fairly so that no one is really, really left behind. As we talk of this data economy that is, you know, turning the world upside down positively and negatively. And I think uh, during our workshop, we we'll see what are the you know, cases of this, uh, of this landscape. So uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Charlie. Uh, I, I'm turning to the to the room to to ask uh, if there are uh, well, first of all, why you 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 take part in this uh, in this workshop and and how you you see the potential well not the potential the the current uh, collaboration with the global majority and how you think it may maybe be, be improved or. Is this what, what you want to take from this uh, from this session? Uh, Henry, do you want to, to start? Well, I, I'm more here to, to learn from what happens outside Europe because I think most of the distortions have been between Europeans uh, that I know of. Uh, so, so that's why I'm here to find out more. Okay, wonderful. And, and Marlies, I, I see you. Uh, yeah, I'm very much nodding. It's very similar. I think the other one about cities, this one was about global. I think we need to think yeah well yeah i think it's complementary because cities are close to citizens or to individuals but we, we have to have a... and i feel like it gets a lot more attention than the bigger picture in general because you hear a lot of smart cities yeah but it's the smart it's the first uh, session of a series so i'm sure that it will, it will, it will, it will. <laughs> you want to add a yeah so i'm a sports woman i would say Hi, I'm Ansko from the My Data Global, and I'm very curious how I can. Yeah, I agree with, with the discussions. Also, uh, what I see are very much uh, Europe centric, and we get this feedback also quite a lot to the to the organization. So I want to also learn and see and how we can broaden broaden our impact and how we can really support support uh, more the global maturity in, in this uh, this uh, goal that My Data Global has. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Dixon, uh, you're raising your hand and then Jay also, uh, if you want to, to jump in, maybe Dixon first and then Jay. Oh, oh so, sorry, I, I didn't raise my hand. I was clapping. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Then, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah. And Jay, did, did you raise your hand or do you want to make a comment at this point? You're clapping. Okay, 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 wonderful. I was <laughs> clapping too, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 good. Well, I didn't have my glasses on. This is why, even though you're on the big screen, uh, this is why probably I wasn't seeing. Well, um, yes, please. Uh, I, I think for me, my personal motivation to come was that. Uh, do, do, do you want to come here so that we, we see you in the screen? Okay. It is very interesting to talk about the global element. And I think that there is uh, there was a good point yesterday made around privacy becoming a luxury. And I think with my data, there's a risk that with the kind of focus on, on often on the EU that we end up protecting, we end up talking about data protection and data empowerment for some of the people that already have the most amount of protection and empowerment in the world and we kind of forget the, the bigger context so yeah here to learn thank you mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's really a, a very important point so it would be quite good to hear from you from you from you guys about about how you see the, the current situation and in in your country or countries you know, if you if you cover several several countries already and, and maybe when you look at the my data declaration are, are there some elements that you feel look a bit a bit far away uh, and are there some which on the contrary are already already there but then so let's let's talk about what's going on now and before before looking at the the outlook and how to get there who wants to to start uh, marcel maybe do you want to to start on this 
on the well uh, assessing the the current situation and and, and Yes, you're on. No. I'm on. Okay, wonderful. Okay, uh, talking about the correlation on regarding uh, personal data, mainly in Africa and mainly in Cameroon, where, where I'm from, uh, we are still regarding, if we're getting Cameroon, people are still not really, they don't really know what, what is it all about. There, there is a big there's a big communication uh, that needs to be done to teach the internet users, all the users of digital uh, services, what is it all about? What can be uh, the impact in their life, on their life and on their everyday uh, activities? Even if the, the administration is not stepping out, they've started discussing about putting in place a really policy on on how to manage those um, those data which are generated and shared every day uh, in the country. So right now we can say we're getting Cameroon that um, we are at the beginning of the process of integrating uh, personal data uh, in the in the management and in our organization. And there's also a little shift we are seeing uh, from moving from the protective part. So the, the, first, the first answer of our government was to be protective, like, okay, all the law was, uh, was regarding uh, the, the bad side effect. So the condemnation part of misuses of uh, all all uh, electronic com communication and uh, maybe and uh, commercial effects. So now there's a, a shift to move from the repressive part from the int uh, from the integration part and looking uh, at opportunities to develop the, the country and the economy. And we even have a, a statement from the our Ministry of uh, Post and Telecommunication yesterday about that. And she think that uh, Data and AE can really help to, to move faster in the developing process and give uh, and offer better services for the population. That's, thank you. Okay, th thanks, Marcel. Uh, Muchiri, do, do you want to, to, to comment on the, on the situation in, uh, in Kenya? Well, Kenya is famous for leapfrogging, mobile payment, etc. cetera. So, so you, 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 you are achieving a, a lot. What's your perspective um, uh, th thank you eric i think for from where i stand or sit um kenya has made great strides uh, in terms of putting in place the enabling environment for innovation um catalyzing that kind of activity by allowing uh, a risk to be to be taken um you know our story with mobile money i think is one that's a good example of innovation preceding uh, policy um, and and that that required uh, leadership that was willing to take risks, you know. So we we have a couple, we have a few instances of that which create an environment um, that that's conducive to uh, to to that. Uh, there are of course there have always been concerns. I think even from early on uh, around how data is managed and what the risks are and what. Uh, kind of abuses might be happening using personal data uh, for, for whatever ends. And we, we saw that during elections multiple times. Um, just recently, something that I think we were all very aware of and had seen to a certain extent uh, became a bit more public. Um, and this had to do with membership of political parties. Uh, you know, the, the, the government put out this portal that allowed for people to check their registration status as members of political parties. And many people found out that they were members of a political party. They didn't know that. Uh, somehow the data got uh, picked up and they got subscribed. <laughs> like they're getting subscribed to a newsletter. Um, and, and, uh, and they're, you know, some of them are, are added supporters, public and supporters of, of one political party, and then suddenly they find they're on a list as, as on the line, on the book, uh, you know, uh, members of, of a different party. 
Um, and a lot of this has to do with, you know, how fast data can move now compared to what, how it could before, um, where, what it can be used for. And when the checks and balances aren't there, kind of signals, what kind of risks, um, you know, we would have to deal with. Um, of course, the government has put in place measures here, the enactment of the data protection uh, legislation, uh, which we're also seeing in some of the other countries we work in, like Nigeria and Sierra Leone. Um, and some of this is hopefully going to help rein back some of these uh, um, bad actors from having from uh, using uh, personal data to 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 do things like this. Um, but I think one of the opportunities that I see is uh, the use of all this innovation to drive new sources of data. Uh, to make new sources of data more available for decision making for those working in some of the development challenges that uh, we found intractable over the past, um, like hunger um, and, and poverty and having to deal with the issue of, of, of inequality and not just at the gender level, but also at an ethnic level and geographical level. Um, the kinds of data that are now possible to get for those who are working in these areas, I think has grown exponentially. Um, but I am encouraged that that we're not just now beginning to get a lot of access to these kinds of new technologies and new data, but we're also seeing the emergence of these checks and balances uh, that would keep uh, bad actors from creating bad scenarios. I think the, the one area that I still feel we are, have a long way to go is, is on artificial intelligence. That we, we, we am yet to see other than maybe Mauritius, uh, maybe South Africa. Um, I'm not sure that many African countries have put in place the mechanisms to make sure that algorithms are accountable and that the use of algorithms for uh, decision-making in the public sector uh, is governed by some set of norms and rules uh, that hold people accountable for the decisions that come out of that, um, of those kind of you know, mechanisms. Uh, yeah. We don't have, for the most part, mechanisms for uh, get, getting a redress for decisions that were made by algorithms. Uh, these are mechanisms that we really need to be in place because they protect the rights of people and allow human intervention to, to step in uh, where necessary. So I think for me, it's a mixed, it's a mixed basket, mostly positive because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of how I see the landscape. Well, so thanks, uh, thanks a lot. I, I, I would like to, to comment just rapidly on artificial intelligence because that's definitely um, a, key, uh, a key issue. Uh, even if it doesn't have, well, negative, even when it's not, uh, it's not negative, it definitely have bias. Uh, I'm thinking, for instance, of, of, of the healthcare uh, system where, where we, we have some, some AI which is trained on uh, 30 to 55 years old Caucasian. In the in the US or in Europe, and clearly, when you if you if you are to use the, the same AI in Africa or in India, etc., or, or in Pakistan, it won't it won't work in the same um, in the same way. So there's also a need for development of AI in well in the continent on, uh, on in Africa, since today the, the topic is uh, is Africa. But for this, the the, the guidelines, etc., have to be to be clear. I, I agree with you. Uh, Dorothy, do you want to, to give us your, your, your outlook from, uh, from Uganda? Uh, yes, uh, Eric, thanks so much. I, I definitely want to begin from the, the issue of context back to the use of technology. We are seeing this uh, not being really taken into consideration when it comes to protection of um, uh, the Africans, uh, Africans, you know? Uh, for instance, if you look at uh, the data protection uh, pro legal framework in all many different countries, including Uganda, we all we are all benchmarking that GDPR, even when it's not the best law. So thinking that it's, it's, it's the yardstick for protection of the Africans then becomes concerning. But um, I'm happy that. Uh, Africa is adopting a legal framework so when it comes to data protection, even when some of them are really uh, not um, up to speed with the use of technology. Currently, we have 24 African countries that have already adopted data protection, including uh, Uganda. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, these laws are hanging on the shelves. There is less enforcement. 
and this came out strongly uh, in the previous uh, symposium that we had uh, on, on the between fifth, fifth, third and fifth of, of this month. We uh, brought together different data uh, data protection regulators from Kenya, Senegal. Uh, uh, we had Uganda um, and Niger, and they're all concerns of enforcement. You no, know, it's big, it's still a, a, a big challenge when it comes to enforcement because mon many of them are not really independent. Uh, the authorities are not independent, and therefore it's become hard for uh, for enforcement to take shape. But also at the African level, it was strongly uh, it, it strongly uh, it, it was strongly recommended that uh, before really uh, focusing on enforcement, we need to see more commitment from African governments when it comes to uh, to to ratifying the the African Convention on Cyber Security and Personal Data Protection, because. This, this 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 is a convention that all African states really identified with, but when it when it, when when it came to ratification, there's slow or there's slow endorsement from different African countries. Only 14 countries, seven years down the road, but these are states that are really uh, verbally committing to protection of a, that people from 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 uh, pervasive use of technology. So the, there's less commitment when it comes to enforcement, but also action in, in terms of uh, protecting people. And yet, like we all know, like you've already mentioned, we are a big data market. But also when it comes to the use of, 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 of this data, for example, for government to really uh, meaningfully uh, develop the continent, it's, it's something that, is, uh, that hangs in the balance. Um, Kenya is leading in innovation, but when you look at the counterparts in, Af in, in, in Uganda, you know, it becomes a challenge of accessing this data, but also government using data to really develop uh, for development purposes, rather than, you know, looking out on who is uh, opposing government, who is dissenting uh, the position of government. So I think it's important for us to shift from uh, exploitative use of data to uh, a more innovative way of uh, ensuring that this data is used for the development of the continent and the people at large. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, I'd like to, to, to give the, the floor to, to Charlie to answer this question, but maybe with, with an additional question, uh, Charlie. Um, we were talking about the situation in Europe. Well, guess what? In Europe, we have a European data strategy carried by the European Union. Can you also, well, you or, 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 or anyone else of our panelists, comments on the African Union uh, position on the, on the data issues? Because it, it, would, it, will, it will be prob probably a good way to, to uniformize and, and, and ensure that uh, the, the agenda moves uh, forward. Charlie? Yeah, thank you, Eric. I think uh, when I look at uh, you know the situation as uh, Moshiri uh, and Dorothy just talk about, as they are in Africa, I want I want talk of Marcel, who is not actually on this on this side of the planet. I I see some sort you know I I feel a bit sad. Because it shows clearly that we, we are like, we are caught by surprise that most of those, you know, most of these issues that we are tackling and that are being handled by, you know, other side of the world as strategic, strategic weapons for the, the, the sort of economic uh, war that is raging out there we see clearly that we are still struggling, you know, struggling to ratify, to ratify a regulation or laws that we have, <laughs> we have given ourselves as African Union. And you are talking of African Union. It's just surprising that we can be, we could be, you know, after seven or more years, we will be forcing our countries you know, to ratify and adopt. We are not even talking of applying. We are just talking of acknowledging that 
uh, uh, you know, a convention is important to protect African assets and then to build a space, you know, that is prone for this economy that, that has just started. And so you are asking about African Union, but this is the proof that African Union is not actually playing the game. It must play because this is, we, we can't just be looking at these issues, you know, from country, uh, country standpoint. Our countries are very weak and it's clear that we can't stand in this, in this space. And we see clearly China building wonderful regulatory uh, tools Uh, Charlie, Charlie, you are frozen on screen. Can you hear us? No, apparently we've lost uh, we've lost Charlie. Well, um, I, I, I would like to make a, to make a pause now, and and um, just like some of the audience here in Amsterdam could react, maybe ask the the, the audience online. Um, what at this point of the discussion what they what, what comments they want to to make what what question they may want to, to ask the the panelists and also to well for their testimony of, of the way they see uh, they see things at the at the moment who wants to to kick in ah okay okay well then, then can you can you bear um a second because in fact i've I just ask a, a question to the online audience, and then then I, I give you back the the floor. So, who wants to? Yeah, thank you, uh, and I'm sorry. No, no, no problem. Who wants to 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 come in? Uh, maybe uh, Freni or Mariam or. Good morning. My name is Daniel uh, Daniel Torres. I am a student, a PhD student uh, here in London. I'd like to ask two quick questions. Uh, one, uh, the first one is concerning the. Um, you mentioned the African Convention on Cybersecurity and the African Convention on Data Protection. I understood uh, those were uh, those are about 17 years old. If that is the case, um, do you believe they are still up to date? And the second question, very quick one, would be uh, following up what you just said: whether you believe um, these. Um, Declarations uh, that we are that we need, uh, similar to the GDPR, whether this could be brought to the United Nations and discussed uh, at that level. Um, yeah, who, who wants to answer in the panelists? Maybe I can mention the the convention. Um, so the convention is is not that old. It's up six years old, I think, but came into force last year, if I'm not wrong. Um, so it's still fairly new, and it's uh, it's on both cybersecurity and data and personal data protection. So it's a single instrument, um, and I think uh, yeah, I think it's still relevant. Uh, it's still practical because it's still new, uh, but of course, like many other instruments of this nature that have come on the other side of GDPR, uh, you will find uh, you know GDPR inspiration. Um, in uh, in some of these instruments, even at the African government level for data protection um, legislation. So and I, I think that it's a, both a good thing and a worrying thing um, in that they, they're probably countries that, you know, pick up uh, uh, foreign benchmarks uh, and more or less almost copy and paste them into, into the national context without really unpacking what it means. Um, for for an African country at the level of development that we are in, um, but yeah, so that's that maybe that's something I'd, I'd have wanted to add in there. Okay, 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 wonderful. Well, um, uh, Freni just asked a, um, a question in the chat, but Freni, maybe you want to to ask it with your camera on. I mean, uh, as a journalist, <laughs> that that could be that could be nice. Well, uh, just bear with me if I'm not able to switch on my camera. <laughs> so <laughs> no I, I prefer but we, not we to hear you, so for today. Uh, but yeah. my <laughs> yes. So um, I've been working a lot around, um, you know, 
creating data stories. And one of the things I've realized is that when we talk about data and AI, a lot of ordinary people don't realize, you know, that there are concerns. All these things still sound very technical to them. And for them, data privacy is not even an issue so long as I can take my taxi, whether by Uber or Safe Border or order my food through any app it's convenience, I'm getting my service. So data privacy is a very technical and out of ordinary um, topic uh, for many ordinary people. So, you know, I, I think we need a, a lot of work in that area. And my concern is how, how do we get that done? Because definitely it needs um, um, lots of, um, lots of, I don't know what, <laughs> support, <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, th thanks for, for this, it, it's very insightful. And guess what, it, it's exactly what we were talking about yesterday uh, here with, with people in Europe with a, with a good framework, etc. Um, we were talking about implementation and, 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 and the whole thing is that, okay, we are a bit activists, but for, for everyone in the, in the street to, to adopt this and to be aware of this, okay, there, there's, there's the, the awareness talking about privacy, etc., which is an issue and which can be an issue when, it, when it's used, for instance, by some... Uh, some governments um, for for the wrong uh, for the wrong reasons. But what is important for for scale-up is also that there are services that are being deployed in in people's goods and and who work on a human-centric and fair model. I guess that's that's what we we see uh, here as well. So the, the the whole question is well, how can we how can we help help you uh, developing this this kind of uh, this kind of service, but before I would like to, to go back before we move too much about the, the, the new services and maybe a, uh, another page of our discussion. Uh, come back to to the African Union and and uh, the political pressure, let's call it that way, uh, that can be can be pushed. How how do you think that concretely? Because the, the objective is well to, to talk about the, the issues, but also to find solutions. How do you think we can we can address this? Uh, Using some of the other of the good stories in Africa, also the the overall global global story, and start um, influencing the the decision makers in Africa so that they realize that they, there are African assets that are being uh, probably depleted by other players, be they coming from China or big platforms or from 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 elsewhere. How do you think this could can be? Possible. Who would like to, to jump in or, or here in the in the room? Um, uh, I will I will try. Yes, please Hello. please go ahead, Marcel. Yeah. yeah. Yes. On how how on how to influence our government. I think. Uh, Freddie is doing and um, all are doing a good one by starting on the ground. Because if for now we need to, to, to do it at the both levels, starting to influence on the ground by uh, raising a awareness to the citizen first, that will help to, to elevate the pressure uh, to the government and then work at the, the second level with the government to, to understand all the opportunity uh, uh, and, and risk faced by, by uh, a mis misuse, misusage of, of, of personal data. Does, now we have, we have some, uh, we, can, we can use AU uh, in a kind of partnership, I'm just thinking with my data to help them, help them uh, understand the opportunity and to be the to make the pressure on the government while the activists like me, Freni, and others are working on the field to educate people on the on the all the risk on, on to be just aware of the opportunity that uh, personal data management, good data management can be for the society. So the for me, um, we need to work on both level on the field with the citizen. And as, a, as an organization with AU on, uh, and others partner to, to influence the government too. That's my point. Okay, okay wonderful, Marcel. Uh, Dixon, you, you had a, a, a nice uh, suggestion. Do you want to, to talk about it? And then can, can we have the, the feedback on, 
on uh, on everybody on this uh, proposal that you're going to make? Uh, yes, um, to, uh, to answer, um, I think finding these questions about um, how, how to make people more aware of um, the, the importance of the data privacy. Uh, first, maybe just um, create some kind of video, which is very simple, and then just explain um, how, how Facebook or Google is taking the data and then it's doing something wrong. And then it can be, it can be very short, like one minute video. And then somehow explain the My Data 101 or basics um, and My Data Declaration. That, that will be fun because we, we kind of did it once in the um, in My Data Japan, like about two years ago. So some random people will come, will join and then learn something uh, new for them. I give you back the floor. Yeah, well, it, it seems like a, like a very good uh, idea and the first action of our action plan for, for today. So that's uh, that's very interesting. Is there is there someone uh, on the on the continent that would uh, here today that would like to to take uh, to take this on? Maybe before you answer, I'm turning towards the private global people. Uh, would you be willing to to assist people on the ground to to create this kind of uh, content? Uh... So the, the good news is that the, the communication team at uh, MyDetect Global is prepared to, to help the, the, the project owner for, for this. So who's, who's volunteering to, to or uh, obviously it doesn't have to be one person, it can be several, several people who would like to, to, to work on, uh, on this. Wow, it is, I have great uh, enthusiasm, about 20 people proposing themselves. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe maybe you can think about it and, and come back to to, to us uh, later. Uh, I, I saw a hand raised, but then then it disappeared from my screen. Dorothy, you you raised your hand. Is that because you're a volunteer? And Marcel as well. Wow, that's great. So, so can we say yes, that I, we I, have? A... Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I do volunteer, but I also want to uh, to add that. Um... The fact that the, the, the UN came up with this convention, it's a convention, if you read it, has good resolutions that uh, all states must undertake to in order to protect people, uh, people and their data. They're very brilliant resolutions. But by the fact that they came up with this convention, it means it shows commitment on their part to be able to protect people. But also given the fact that um, the downside, the downside of it is that, uh, yes, the EU it has uh, uh, from, uh, constitutes uh, um, different governments, African governments, some of them that are more powerful than the other. So um, working also with governments, uh, like, like Michelle, Michelle, Michelle is, uh, mentioned, working with communities and, and then governments to, to, be, to ensure that there's enforcement and also uh, the African Union level sometimes is constrained by resources in order to, to, to really enforce uh, some of these resolutions and also support member states, you know, to be able to, uh, to find value uh, in, in, in ratification of these conventions would be a, a good process for, for, um, for anyone who wants to, to, to have this recommend, I mean, the convention ratified uh, to move in. Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, very, very important point. Uh, well, I'm supposed to moderate this panel. I'm not sure I'm, I'm supposed to give ideas, but let let me let me uh, have a try. Um, we, we've got my data Cameroon and, and my data in, in, in different countries. Would it make sense to have a uh, my data Africa, even though it's uh, it's informal, so that then this my data Africa can actually speak to the to the African Union with examples from Kenya, for example, to 
uh, or from Uganda to, to explain where good regulation actually created jobs, improved people's lives, that it was not uh, a cost, that it was the, the, the country taking, taking back uh, what it could uh, do and motivating also, I guess, its uh, uh, university graduates and, and, and other people to actually stay and work in the, in the, in the country because well, we know that brain drain is, is, uh, is in some countries um, an issue. What do you think about this, uh, this idea of uh, my data Africa? I mean, it's, it's brilliant. I, I think all efforts are really very important uh, in, this, in, in, in this regard. So it's, uh, it's an initiative that would, would really be uh, welcome. Uh, I, I want to give an example. Uh, when, we were, uh, when we organized the symposium uh, this month, we, we did it with the Ministry of ICT. Now, Ministry of ICT is the, is the one that's supposed to push for the ratification Uganda's ratification for uh, for the convention, but also above the Ministry of ICT, there's the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Ministry of Internal Affairs is coordinates the internal affairs issues, and therefore they had to work in in, in partnership. So uh, an official from the ministry really hinted to us that there's good there's goodwill from government to have it ratified, but then the processes uh, the government is not willing to finance the processes. And therefore, when uh, the ministry approached the internal affairs to, to speak to, uh, to, to, to uh, undertaking the processes of ratification, so the ministry, internal affairs then asked ICT ministry whether they have resources to really undertake the process. So it's, it's an issue of prioritizing uh, in the different countries whether this is a priority, whether it's an area that they are really willing and ready to really. Uh, 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 provide resources, uh, then, you know, as they weigh in on the different priorities, then this, the, the, the issue of engaging on uh, the Africa, ratifying the convention then becomes, uh, uh, you know, off the table, you know, it's taken off that table, it's not, it's, it's not in the hierarchy of uh, the priorities that the states, uh, different states have to undertake. So I think uh, there could be also experiences in other African countries that speak to the same. And therefore, um, I think civil society and other actors can be key, key players in, in having these governments really uh, own up to the document. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jay, do you want to, to jump in? You, you have an interesting comment and question about the, the, the tensions between the, uh, on one side, uh, production of personal data and the other one, the, the, the need to to collect, process, utilize uh, that data for development. Do you want to, to elaborate on that? Um, actually, I think Mucheri has answered it very well. So I think it's perhaps more important that maybe he can speak to this. I agree with him. So I hope it's all right. Um, please ask Mucheri, would you be able to do that? Um, I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Was it on the... It, it, it's just the, 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 tension? the, 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 the tensions between, yes, data, but, you know, the privacy concerns, yeah. which is, I think, um, in, in more, uh, let's say, mature um, data rich environments like uh, Europe, perhaps, uh, uh, there's yeah. a lot of concern about how data is misused, abused, um, that, that it gets processed without permissions and so on. But I think you have spoken very eloquently about data invisibility. And I think even in the earlier intervention you talked about, uh, I think Charlie did too, about the lack of data, um, that particularly from an African perspective, yeah? That, and you need this data in order to allocate resources appropriately to meet needs. And everybody talks about data driven, but what if the data is not there? And how do we manage? I mean, that was the point of the question, yeah. really. But yeah. Bucheri, you get it. So thank you. If you want to. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, and that's. So Frenny was talking about, um, you know, this, this, this challenge with getting people to understand what it means, uh, what data privacy actually means, what the impact of lack of data privacy could could look like, right? Um, and that that I think plays out for the public when they see what a violation looks like, right? So I think 
it's such an abstract term that they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to connect it with their real life unless they can connect it to an, an occurrence. Um, like the story I've just told about the political party, you know, um, membership. Uh, and I think that that for me is where you find that, you know, that tension, right? So in this case, uh, the data was coming from places where, you know, that data sharing was, didn't even exist. I'm sure those, those sources didn't even know their data was, was borrowed uh, for, for that purpose because there was just no governance around the records at the place where the, that information came from. Uh, but you'd find that, um, you know, an institution that's conducting, say, you know, we, work, we also work in food security, so we have agriculture projects. You know, you're, you're collecting data from farmers, you're getting the consent to get the data to use it to provide them with a service. In our case, um, advisory extension, agricultural extension and advisory. So then uh, after some time, you have something like a million records. Uh, you're, you become very attractive uh, to private sector, to parts of government, to other donors who now want more value extracted from this resource that you now have um, whether they funded the whole exercise or not. Um, and now you have this, this problem that I have, you know, this resource that has been generated through consent um, that can, it's achieving a, re a really good thing, but uh, I'm arguing to myself, it could perform and, value and, pro and produce even more value if it was extended in this way. Um, what happens for the most part is, Data, the collectors, the processors don't go back, you know, to the to the data subject, and say, "I know you gave me this data for agriculture extension advisory, but you see, we have this new nuclear science thing that we're doing, and we think this data could be really cool. Could, you, could I use your data for that? You know, that that mechanism, even if it existed, isn't used. Um, and now you have this now tension that what you know what we're talking about." that there is new value that has been identified, uh, but the consent was not designed to allow for use beyond, uh, beyond the initial use case. Um, and I think Kenya's data protection legislation and like most others in Africa uh, att attempts to articulate that. Uh, but for all of this, I, I'm sure Dorothy mentioned this, I remember hearing, the issue tends to be the independence of the Office of the Data commissioner, um, uh, the budgets, the implementation mechanisms for the act, the enforcement. Uh, and as long as those remain weak, these tensions will continue playing out in the softer areas where data processors are not at significant risk of prosecution or sanctions uh, because there's no oversight. Uh, and you know this will continue to be a part of life unless unless these mechanisms make their way to the ground um, in terms of enforcement, in terms of education, um, so that, you know, citizens understand, you know, what has happened. Your data was misused regardless of the existence of X and Y legislation. Um, if these things become more public debate, uh, they make their way to public discourse a bit more um, in ways that threaten political actors, you know, uh, you could lose an election because you mismanage data. I think that's where we need to go to before, um, before we see remarkable change. Now, that's that's my small pessimist side, but uh, well, it's it's important not to be too angelic and and, and see both sides of the coin. Which thank you very much, uh, Paula. Welcome. Um, you arrive right at the right moment because we we have decided that we we uh, educating citizen was important, and, and and we've got a team now who's going to to work on a on a video. We were also uh, thinking and talking about uh, influencing the the African Union. You know, just like the European U Union is. Is instrumental on on this. So since since you're a, a lawyer and and very active on the subject in uh, in Kenya, do you want to 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 summarize a bit the, the situation on the not not just in Kenya but on the on the continent and also uh, propose ways to to move the agenda up on the on the well African governments and African Union uh, agenda. I think there is a misunderstanding. 
because I'm not a lawyer and I'm not, I'm not from Kenya. Some Mexican designer working <laughs> <Okay>. from Finland. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, I, I read that in the chat. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, me too. I, I was a bit like, okay, maybe, uh, that maybe there is two with the same name. Could be. <laughs> but, but, but welcome, anyways. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so, apparently, <laughs> yes, there is another name, as, as Jay is just, uh, just saying now. Um, who wants to, to comment on what, uh, what has been uh, said so far before we, we turn another page? I don't see any raised hands. Okay, um, then, then uh, I wanted to, to ask you um, a question. Actually, where, uh, Jay raised his hand. Sorry? Jay, Jay has raised his hand. Yeah. Oh, Jay, go ahead, please. May, may, I, I think uh, just to follow up on, on Mucheri's um, comment, I, I, um, it, it's absolutely right. Uh, and and the, the question is not about uh, the best off the shelf law that that governments and I I have some experience of this that they can get other people to draft and then incorporate it's not just about that but how you actually enforce the law and how you actually advance the protection issues many people don't even understand when their or don't recognize when their rights have been violated or when data is not secure and is being processed in ways that that perhaps the, the, the esteemed audience here would, would find very troubling. So I think maybe as a way to advance it is that we need to identify what are the critical pressure points and then to draw up an alliance, let's call it that for the moment, between My Data Global as a global organization that can campaign on these issues, find allies and advocate for, um, if it's a question of resources, then try to, um, to summon up the resources to meet some of these things. Uh, and if, if, if nothing else, perhaps to raise um, awareness, uh, um, ad you know, to address lack of awareness, that's a better way of putting it, such as through the video that's been suggested. And I think that's a great idea. Um, so thank you for listening. That, that's my quick contribution. Okay, thanks, Jay. Uh, I, I have a, a question. Uh, well, we know demographics uh, in Europe, in the US, in Asia also, there's an aging population. Africa is definitely a young uh, continent. So um, could, could, uh, could anyone comment on uh, my data for children? Because clearly there, there are tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's uh, citizen. Um, so to, to, to know what, what is going on, how it's uh, acting and what, what are the next uh, steps? Who wants to comment on, uh, on this? Hello? Yes, this Marcel. is Paula again. I, I see that Marcel oh. is there. No, so... go on, Paula. You, you, you do. Go on. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, uh, I think we all agree that, and perhaps the starting point for many of us has been that uh, our generation has a big challenge, but it is really in the hands of the next generation to really change things. So that's a bit the approach that uh, we are taking. And today we're having a session to try to understand, not so much from the legal perspective, uh, but more from the experience perspective, how can we create ethical and legal systems that are not only fulfilling that perspective, but also that they work so well for the well-being of the children, of the family, of the circle of trust, that they are uh, uh, implemented widely. So uh, uh, I'm really happy to hear about uh, the perspective of Africa, because definitely there is something that it's important to consider in this field not create solutions for those in the, in the North, but a solution for children all over the world. And I would be very happy to welcome, if, especially if there's experts on the legal frameworks for children to join our group. So this is a bit of our uh, a weak point at the moment. Okay, thank you, Paula. Uh, Marcel, you, you, you started to talk. Do you want to, to jump in? 
I think it's okay. Uh, Paula just express what I was thinking about. Okay, okay, but but on, on the situation of uh, of uh, children uh, in regards to to data in uh, in uh, in Africa, um, do you have a oh. comment to make, or, or does anyone else have comments to make? Regarding the the, the children. Um, regarding the children in the digital world, I think the question is, is really complex as parents or tutors that don't really understand what is it all about. And um, we even need to rethink our educational system if we want to get uh, those right, um, how can I put it, understood by the children. So from there, there's, there's also, as we are, as we are saying, um, a big, big part of awareness from the, from the parents of the education system so that we can, from, from those awareness, if, if they're aware of all the, the opportunity of risk of, of regarding personal data management, we can easily come through developing laws or regulation to, to help or protect our children when they're using uh, the digital environment. That's how I can put it. Okay, that, that's quite clear. Uh, Dorothy, do you want to, to comment on, uh, on this, on the, on the subject of the younger generation and future decision makers? Dorothy, I don't know if you hear us. No, apparently she's still on mute. Um, anyone wants to to jump on the on the subject of uh, of children and the and the future, or can we move? Can we move on? Okay, well, let's uh, let's move on. Then, then I have a quite a provocative question for our four panelists. But then, if uh, anyone else wants to comment. Um, well, we, we all know, and hopefully we have all signed the My Data Declaration. Um, what is the article that is not in the My Data Declaration and that you feel would fit your, your, your needs on the ground and that you would like to, to suggest? Who wants to start? Uh, Charlie? Charlie is very quiet, which is not. Uh, which is not uh, no, no. <laughs> Let me open my <laughs> my mic. I'm, uh, and you know, I'm struggling. I'm sorry for this. I'm struggling with the internet, and it it shows clearly uh, most of the problems that we have in Africa. And I think uh, if you look at my data declaration, maybe we need to talk not only of data in the my data declaration but also infrastructure because yep. data flows through infrastructure and that's something i think we need to add in 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 the declaration so that we we move also not only talking of data rights because for me that's the that's the end but we need to start with sort of infrastructure that can help us you know to let data uh, data flow and for now, that's one of the key issues that we have in Africa. And as I was saying previously, we are sort of caught by surprise by these technologies and things are moving so fast and, and our regulators are not coping. You know, <laughs> they are not ready actually. And so the situation we face in Africa, here, Mushiri, Dorothy and Marcel talking of, even Jay and all others talking of this, it seems like the burden is on civil society and citizen and activists, you know, to push things in Africa. And it's incredible because when you look at Europe and you look at the uh, US and China, government and regulator are, uh, regulators are the one leading the game, actually. <laughs> they are the one designing the system because they look, they look very far ahead and they see the sort of you know, the sort of constraints that competition might bring to them. And we see what uh, President Trump in the US was doing with China and China is watching. And that's 
that's really how the world works now today. But Africa is just as passive as usual. And we are expecting, you know, Dorothy, Mushiri, and all those people who have no financial resource and no legitimacy when you look, and no power, legitimate power to change things and to, to decide, you know, to push things. And, and it's incredible as we find ourselves fighting against our governments, our leaders, you know, to move on and to, and to be aware of type of warfare that is going on in, in the world. And, and it's very sad. So for me, as we talk of my data declaration, probably we need to make sure my data declaration also support infrastructure, reliable infrastructure because I think on data and so on, there are so many things said there, but, uh, and this is actually a problem. I mean, Central African Republic, we are talking of digitalization of government processes and so on. We are working in that. And see, I can't even speak for five minutes without being, uh, being cut off. And it's so, certainly a problem, so thank you. Yes, thanks, Charlie. The, indeed, the first digital right is to have access to, to, to data, so a very important point. That, there's also a matter of communication. Um, there was a discussion about a, a data space in France, and they wanted the, the public service to, to, to fund uh, some, uh, some projects, which was well, quite expensive. It was 20 million, uh, 20 million euros that they were asking, uh, asking for. And the, the, the public uh, structure was saying, oh, no, it's, it's way too expensive. And then they say, well, you know, the TGV lines, the, the, the speed train, just, just to build the tracks with this amount, with this budget, you build 550 meters of track. So half a kilometer. And guess what? And then the, the, the public service said, oh, is that so? Well, <laughs> and, and so they revised their, their position. So maybe we go back also to to communication, explaining, etc. Who wants to, um, to 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 come up with the with the uh, uh, an ideal new article for the my data declaration? And, and and by the way, to say I agree with Charlie, it doesn't work. Um, so uh, um, I, I may not have yes, a I may not have a full it. article um, at this point, but I do think it's something that would benefit from some unpacking. And um, so there are, there are, there is a real digital divide, right? I think that's, that's, that hasn't gone anywhere. In, okay, I mean, we've not eliminated it. It has changed in form in some way or another in some places, but it still exists. And that digital divide also is more amplified when you disaggregate it by gender, um, especially in rural areas. Women and girls are being left way more behind than than their you know men and boys counterparts uh, when it comes to access to ICT and skills and I'm, I'm sure you know Marcel in her work or with, with STEM and girls you know can can attest to this. That means that if we are thinking about uh, my data declaration and thinking about giving people more data empowerment and the ability to use you know to have better control and better. Um, you know, ways of serving themselves with their own data, then we ha have to think about those who cannot do that because they, they're not in the data. They don't have access to the infrastructure um, or they, they exist in data in ways that were passive um, and they don't even know that this data exists. So you have an issue with awareness. Does this data exist? My, does my data exist somewhere? Do I have the skills and the infrastructure to do anything about it? Um, and I, I think the... Those are factors that make it, that pose an existential risk to anything that would want to do uh, downstream when it comes to, I mean, grassroots level when it comes to this kind of work. Uh, so, you know, finding a way to navigate that real digital divide um, and making sure that those who are not in the data or, don't, or not, are not in the infrastructure um, can still participate and still be protected um, and still have some empowerment, I think would be would be really cool. I don't know what that article will look like. Charles might have a good idea. I don't know, um, but yeah, that's yeah. But we're we're that's looking forward to 
yeah. we're, we're looking forward to, to you writing it in the in the next days or, or, or weeks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Dorothy, I'm going to come back to you, but first I would like to, to comment on uh, what uh, uh, Dixon just uh, just said about combining SDGs in the My Data Declaration might allow multinational companies to collaborate more actively. And, and, and here I, I would like to, to turn to the My Data Global team uh, to know if My Data is engaged with the SDGs and with the United Nations on the data rights or... Okay, but okay, so we 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 definitely have to have to look into to that because that's definitely a good uh, a good idea, and especially with with well, we all know about greenwashing, etc. So even even if it's for the bad reasons, if through SDGs we can we can have already some uh, some corporates be more interested in those kind of issues, and hopefully also uh, other corporates and governments be interested in those issues, obviously for the right reasons. Uh, that would be very good. So Dorothy, uh, back to back to you. My question was, well, you, you know, and hopefully you have signed the, the, the My Data Declaration. What is the article that is not in the My Data Declaration and that you would like to, to see coming in uh, there? Perhaps, uh, Eric, uh, for me, it's not about the article, but it's about involvement, participation. You know, uh, I think it's important that the, in, in, throughout the process, uh, we, we, we really get uh, the people that we are checking uh, to become allies uh, to this to, 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 to struggle. For instance, if we're talking about transparency and accountability, companies are very important, governments are really important. We may not work with the entire government, but how, how about uh, specifically focusing on uh, um, data protection regulators in the different countries, you know, uh, focusing that uh, um, AU, for instance, as, 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 a, a continental, as a continental agency. So participation for me, is, I think is very key uh, because oftentimes we speak to ourselves and we are the converted already but then the people that you want to change are always far away from us. So we need to begin lobbying for these, um, for the change makers to be part of, of, of such conversations and engagements when it comes to uh, enforcement of, of uh, for instance, my data declaration. It's a good document. It speaks to, uh, it's powerful in terms of protection and, and, uh, and empowerment of citizens, which is what we've been talking about all along. But then let's also focus more on participation involving uh, other actors that are change makers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dorothy. Uh, who wants to, to jump in? Panelists, but also uh, participants, both online and, and here in the, in the room on, uh, on, on potential new articles or at least uh, uh, areas for, for work that would be relevant for the situation in, um, in Africa and the potential uh, outcome in the in its data economy. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but we're not here for the questions. <laughs> no, yeah. um, do we have reactions on uh, online? Uh, I'm trying to look in the in the chat. Maybe um, I can add some. Yeah, yes. Go yeah. Ahead. yes. Um, actually, uh, from my data, we are kind of like umbrella community for different kind of um, technologies, which is open source also, sometimes closed source. But uh, last time when I attended a symposium with, um, with, with another Af African um, community, it's that um, it, most people, they said that um, they don't trust um, multi-international company which asked people to buy their products and then bind in to their system and then it costs them a lot of money. So I would say like um, with our MyData operators or um, all the other uh, open source um, platform out there, um, we, we can at least do something because it's free and then um, it's always good to have some kind of um, free workshop to help people set up um, the, the, the platform for personal data store or whatever and then 
maybe to to have some kind of like workshop to teach people um how to share data or unshare the data something like that to to learn a little bit by a little bit um how 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 important is that is their personal data will be and then from then on they they can get used to it and then closing the gap and then we wouldn't we, we will leave no one behind so then that might be good because um at least everything is free right for for the open source and we are the nerdy the nerdy people who can do all this like volunteering and and, and doing things for free so yes yeah, so, that's so, my so it, idea you know the, the very good idea so in fact it's the next stage after the awareness with the video then then to be concrete uh, on uh, dig dig down into into details um would one of our oh yes uh, uh, question maybe i know that before covid we were hoping to uh, do meetings all over the world basically and i don't know to what extent in africa there have been meetings from the community itself because this way we can share some ideas but i feel like if you want to move towards let's have an african community as a whole um that that we could help like i hope it would be amazing i think to actually meet in person mm -hmm. and for them to meet in person yeah. as well but i don't know how viable that is for the ones that we want to have for the different leaders to meet up and different leaders share space and share their views mm -hmm. right here yeah. uh, did, did you hear what uh Marlies was uh, was saying no, probably not yeah you want to no. to give a, a yeah, if Mali's come closer, I, thank I can you. I give a short, short summary. <laughs> so the idea was basically, is it viable to have live meetups with the hub leaders from the different countries in, instead of having to always stay online to yeah, inspire and, and learn from each other directly? Yeah, very true, because one, one, of the, one of the comments this morning, you know, on, on the feedback from, from the, uh, the first day of the of the meeting, uh, someone stressed that what was said in the in the workshops in the meeting was important, but what was even more important was the discussion in between. Uh, so that's that's the advantage uh, versus uh, Zoom. So wh what do you what do you say? Uh, well, either now, but with COVID situation, it may still be difficult. But but is it um, is it doable? Because well, I know that we 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 travel to Africa and you can travel uh, within within Africa. Is it something that we should be thinking about organizing a, a My Data Africa uh, get together where people from the My Data Global team could uh, could join in and, and uh... Yes, I think Charlie, you can be the leader of this <laughs> preparing My Data Africa and then everyone will join in and, and, and most probably if, if I have my wife permission then i'll join <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes yeah, I agree no with problem you, uh, dixon no, no problem dixon uh, sorry eric no, no problem i think we when we started the community my data africa with uh, with timu and teams uh, at my data, we we had already got a dynamic that was launched in Tunis when we met at the RICON. We met so many people, and um, and I think COVID nineteen stopped uh, maybe delayed the, the process because we had three more chapters that were already on. We had already started organizing interviews and meetings with uh, all those. Uh, friends in Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, and um, and then I think here we will restart this process and trying to with uh, as I saw Dorothy, uh, I just Mushiri and others, I just told them that I think in the chat that let's join my data and build and build this uh, this dynamic movement in Africa and uh, so that we can have more country chapters, more people to sensitize around data and also to advocate with our government. Unfortunately, we have to do that with government and regulators and uh, most of the time we have to do this as a duty because we are aware 
you know, unfortunately, or maybe extraordinarily, we are more aware of these trends, technologic trends, AI ethics, you know, algorithm bias and so on, more than some of our governments and leaders and parliamentarians. And we have to, so we have to step in and for this and do more advocacy work and do more sensitization work so that they can move on to understand that uh, this time is very critical, you know, for, for the future of Africa so that we don't just get, you know, stay as a prey, even in this, uh, in this landscape where we could have leapfrog, you know, to, to catch up the, 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 you know, to, to, to move forward very tremendously and, and reap the benefits that exist, that technology is providing, you know? And uh, so that's what I can say. So I'm, I'm happy to, to lead this as, as, as you, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Go back to you, Eric. Yeah, um, well, that, that's a very important point, obviously. Uh, we, we have new people who have joined us. Uh, Lawrence, uh, Parfait, uh, do you want to, to jump in and introduce yourself and, and explain what, uh, well, what, what your relation with, with my data uh, is and, and, and have a bit of uh, um, your, your comments on, on the situation so far and the, and the outlook as you, as you can see them? Who wants to, to go first? Parfait, maybe? Parfait, do you want to, to jump in? Or Lawrence, do you want to? Hello? Okay. Yes, hello, Lawrence. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Well, my English is not uh, very fluent. Uh, I'm Lawrence so no, I am working like a security assist assistant and I used to receive um, uh, information uh, for this forum because I am very interested about uh, uh, privacy and data security, uh, uh, of course. Um, I'm here because I'm interested about the subject. Uh, that's all. Hello? Okay, yes, th th thank you, Hello. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, we hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, where noise. are you based? Where, where are you based, Lawrence? Uh, sorry? Where are you based? Well, which, I am which in country? I'm in Cameroon. Oh, oh, Cameroon. Okay. And, 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 uh, and do, you, well, do you know Charlie Martial, Goudou? Because, because maybe you could, uh, you, you could liaise with, uh, with him because he's, he's uh, Cameroon, uh, Cameroon based. He's one of our. Uh, um, uh, okay. I used to uh, receive his message, but I don't, I don't know him. Uh, I don't know him particularly. Yeah, but I, I'm sure he will be more than happy to, to recruit uh, someone who's uh, passionate about the, about the subject. Won't you, uh, Charlie, if you're still on? I know he's struggling from uh, some Central Africa uh, with his uh, internet connection, but, uh, but he was here some time ago. I don't see him any longer. I can uh, see him. So ah, Charlie, Charlie, you're back you're here. Yes, I'm still there. I think okay. internet is uh, uh, so, Lawrence. I think we will certainly connect. Uh, maybe you are in one of the network that we created around my data or my data Africa or my data Cameroon, and I will connect with you privately so that we we retake, we reconnect around this. Okay, I will. It will be my pleasure. Okay, uh, may, maybe at this point, I would like to, to give the floor to two of the other team members, Jay and uh, Ali. Do you want to 
Do you want to, to, to jump in and make a, make a few comments at this point of the, of the discussion? Jay, maybe uh, go ahead. Well, I only wanted to say that, that I want to hear more from friends um, in Africa. So I'm, I'm quite happy to do things <laughs> kind of in the comment section and um, in, in, in the document that I'm very happy to share. So I'll, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Jay. And, and also, uh, we, we, we know, uh, well, those of us who, who know you, we know that uh, even though you're, you're based in Malaysia, uh, you, you have a very close look and, and indeed more than a look at what is going on in, um, in Africa. So thanks for, for this. Uh, Ali, uh, live from Islamabad, is it? Um, do you want to, to, to make a, a comment uh, at this point? Yeah, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jay. And thank you, everyone, uh, for participating and making this uh, very lively discussion. I uh, I am very optimistic uh, after, especially after this event and uh, being communicating with a lot of uh, uh, people from the region. And uh, <clears throat> I am looking forward to these uh, initiatives uh, and the discussion, especially uh, one of the members who are saying ab about the live discussions from the live room, I think. Uh, I forget uh, her name. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me or I am frozen? Sorry. Yeah, no, we, hear we hear you. We hear you perfectly well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's uh, all from me. I think, and uh, I think uh, uh, we all should uh, uh, work together and um, collaborate to this uh, my data initiatives for region, and we look forward to the initiatives we are discussing. Actually. Okay. Thank well, you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Ali. Who wants it's, to? It's my player. Who wants to, to jump in? Uh, who hasn't spoken yet? And since I have all the names, uh, well, parfait, you, you still haven't uh, spoken. Do you want to, to, make, a, to make a comment? Uh, apparently not. Okay, well, never, never mind. Um, I hello? Like, well, I, I, yes, hello. Hello, welcome, parfait. <laughs> Yes. Hello. My name. My name is. My name is Taiwe Pafe, founder of uh, Unlimited Action for Development in Cameroon. Uh, I have a notification in my data Cameroon, created by, by Charlie. So, I'm not have a very a very uh, a very signification of my data Cameroon. So I want to 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 know to know him so i'm sorry uh, my 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 english is not very fluent i better for my mind so i want to to see if and um and notification for charlie this uh, in in our group my data cameroon so i'm joining in this group in this meeting greeting for for share with with us, good. Okay, but, but, parfait, Taïwé, bienvenue avec, avec grand plaisir. Je suis sûr que Charlie va entrer en, en communication avec vous très, très rapidement. En tout cas, merci d'être là aujourd'hui. Um, yes, Charlie. We And Eric, see. we are already in touch. Actually, we are in touch with Parfait. We oh, okay. even shared information on WhatsApp. We are already we are already connected and uh, oh. and I would like to share with I would like to share with francophone uh, uh, francophone people in this space that you don't have to apologize for your fluency or so on. You are already making you know quite quite good in trying to talk in English and trying to reach out to those who don't. We don't actually understand French, and and I think this is this is what we are all about here, being in some sort of inclusive in, inclusivity mindset, you know, participation mindset, 
being here is already good and we, we support that. And, and so thank you. Uh, Merci, Charlie. <laughs> oh, okay, wonderful. We, we've got that. We've got the, the comment. Yeah. So, hi again. I'm uh, Anspo from My Data Global, uh, the staff. So, I was wondering if this, this conversation reminded me uh, of uh, some point we were talking that uh, about this inclusivity that we work mostly in English, but we actually would like to, of course, include the people who don't speak English uh, as well or, or, or like be more comfortable working in their. Like own language, so this is something that that I would be very happy to help you uh, uh, with Victor with the communications to uh, create materials for uh, for in your like in French or like what what other languages you would like to have in for the different African regions. So I know that this is a a big big uh, problem for the for the for the like uh, our community that mostly speak English, and so this is what something that we want to work on. I know that the, the declaration is in, in, in French, but there may be some other materials also that uh, uh, like some lighter uh, white papers or something like that. So this is something that I can, I would be very happy to support. Mm. Well, and, and, and thank you. Thank you very much. And then one, one good point, and, and which would be a symbol as well, is if we have the money, if someone wants to, to, to translate the My Data Declaration in Swahili or, or, or other languages, we would be more than happy you know, because it's, it's important that the message goes across and not just to English or French speaking or Finnish speaking people. Um, it, by the way, is it, is it something that, uh, that, that you could, uh, could support? The, the, the fact of, uh, and, and when I say support, let's basically do it. <laughs> you, you, heard me, you, you understand me. Uh, to, to, to translate the, the My Data Declaration is in, in as many uh, African languages as possible. Is it something that is- uh, There is a link there. There is a link, Eric. There is a link that Dixon just put in the chat. Uh, on my de my uh, my data declaration in French, and I think it was done by people in the in the Slack group. I think Marcel was part of this group, and and some of the French speakers or maybe bilingual people at my data. Where well, I don't know if this is already officially validated, but uh, uh, or maybe approved. But I think that it makes sense for those who are French speakers that. Uh, uh, French speaker that that they can they can have a, a good grasp of what my data declaration is in his English version. Yes, yes, indeed. But I, I was thinking um, outside English and French to have it in in, in Swahili and, and and why not a Kenya, Rwanda, and other other African languages so that you don't have to master French or or, or English to understand this. And also, it would be also a, a uh, a strong signal that uh, that indeed the, the my data movement is, is truly truly global and, and talking to uh, everyone else so i was more looking for volunteers for swahili and, and the other the other languages yeah i i, I see you very very circumspect uh, charlie Yes, I was I was trying to write in the chat as I saw Freni uh, talking about Swahili, and we are very proud of uh, of this sort of you know taking care of these issues and making sure we can really really go to the rural areas because most of the time when we think of all these translation issues, we think with our urban mindset you know where we have our official languages and, and Swahili and Swahili is also let's say Western or maybe colonial, colonial official languages. And, uh, and I think Swahili is, um, is an official language in some countries. And even we don't have to be talking of official languages. We have to, to reach people where they are with, with what we have. So and we probably and certainly welcome very much all those who will be, who will be keen to, to not only to, you know, to raise this issue in this context, but also to see how they can support. They might not be translator themselves, but they can help also to reach out to those who are who will volunteer to to help us, you know, 
build this so many translations because when you get to when you come to Africa, you will have thousands of languages, you know, that we need to translate to. And, and this is very important. And I think that's what we must do. That's a challenge. And that is a challenge that we we absolutely need to, to take on because we really want no one to be left behind. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. And what I like in the My Data Declaration is that you can read it without having any technology background, etc. It's really meant to, to speak to everyone. So since that's the that's the aim, if it's translated in more in more languages and especially today uh, in African languages, that's very, very good. So if there are some volunteers or if you know people who who master uh, some some languages and, and, and would be uh, uh, interested to to already translate uh, the data declaration that would be quite good that on, on the home page on the, we, we can click on French, English, Portuguese, and, and, and Swahili and other languages. There are many languages already. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there are already languages, but I'm not. I, I, I think that, that there is no uh, actual uh, African uh, language. I mean, apart from French, English, Portuguese, which which were basically uh, colonial <laughs> colonial languages, say the, the Frenchman. Okay, okay, wonderful. Um, where are we? How are we doing on time? Oh, we, we have 10 minutes uh, left. Yes, so, um, uh, Dixon, do, do you want to, to, to summarize um, a bit what was said and, and the different uh, action points that were, that were discussed? And also, um, because I said in the opening that this was the first installment of a series uh, we're in the in the in the my data Netflix so this was the the, the pilot and, and hopefully uh, it will move forward so what are the the, the next steps past this uh, this very very uh, insightful uh, workshop um, what will be the next workshops but also in between what uh, what will uh, happen? Dixon, do you want to? <laughs> yes, I will do my best because uh, um, so, so first, um, this video will be uh, shared to everyone. Um, and basically, I, I will share this with uh, Ansku and then she will be able to put it on the, the web page. And also, um, since there's some chatting in the, um, in the log already, so uh, I'll also share the, the, um, the, the contents of the chat, um, maybe by email or in, in Slack because there's not much um, privacy, except for the Gmail account, I will just delete it so that it will become just anonymous and then everything will be, will be shared. So um, for, for the next action, um, <clears throat> um, there's the one that uh, we talk about, uh, how about like adding some things uh, more, uh, more, more necessary or, or useful. Um, from the global majority's point of view to the um, de decorations of my data. So um, um, I kind of suggest that maybe we can put more SDGs re related um, information there so that um, at least um, <clears throat> at least uh, some of the enterprise can, can be able to support us because that will be in their interest to, to include those um, um, activities in, in their reports like ESG and, and something else. Uh, actually, Victor is help, helping me out to put some of my, my, my dear for children's um, activities in, into Fujitsu's uh, report. So then we, we have more people to back us up. And uh, the other thing would be, instead of just um, uh, having online, we can always have a um, physical web workshop or something so that um, besides just talking about um, what we have to do, um, we can actually go into um, different villages or, or places that we, we can convey our messages to everyone. So it will be more like, it's more binding and, and physical. So, and, um, and the other thing would be uh, to, to have more um, similar message, maybe by video or maybe by articles that, um, that we can convey how important it's, um, data privacy is to, to, to random people. It doesn't have to be technical. It's, can, it can be just one minute of video just to explain why it's bad to, to share the data without any permissions and how, you, how they can protect it and then how my data can help them protect it. So basically, basically that's what I remember. Uh, 
anyone's uh, Jay or uh, uh, Ali or Eric, you want to uh, sum up, give more comments? Thank you. Well, Jay was making a very good suggestion, was which was to say, well, that we we, we should involve uh, all all participants, uh, maybe through a shared document on on Slack or or, or something um, or something else, so that because indeed, well, I guess it was a, a rich discussion, so we came up with a few um, action plans, but maybe upon reflection, uh, people will come up with uh, other ideas. So thanks, Jay, for this uh, suggestion. That's a very good. Uh, Suggestion. Um, so, what do you think, uh, Dixon? Can uh, can this be done? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I'm looking for the, uh, the document that we have. Actually, um, um, I can share the document so that everyone can just write 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 their notes in there, and then um, hopefully uh, we will put in our next meetings um, schedule there so that um, people can join, and um, if possible. Um, if if they can give us email, maybe in direct message, uh, it would be nice. Uh, so so um, how about the the, the core members um, share their link in profile in, in the chat so that everyone can can just get connected first and then afterwards we can send our invitation directly. What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good idea. Well, actually, I put my my email because. <laughs> Because Parfait asked for for it, so if the other members of the team want to to put their their email in the in the chat box, that would be a very good uh, very good idea. Uh, well, yes, I'm cool. I, I was going to tell you one thing that uh, this uh, conversation reminded me of the like, next steps that we we are drafting a uh, one or two pager with Victor about like the basics of my data. This is like very condensed uh, paper, so mm -hmm. we will then. Uh, then probably share it to you so you can translate it. It's even easier and shorter for me to translate this one to pager for what, what is my data basically about. And then, then I, I thought sometimes when we have these blog posts, then we have also like condensed information in this uh, blog post, then maybe these, these can be translated also sometimes. So we can we can stay in touch and I can let you know, or like every time we have, we have some content, then if somebody is. Uh, Willing to translate the contents on different thematic themes. Well, that, that, that would be great. Definitely, if we, if we already have the my data declaration and, and this two pager explaining completely what uh, what is uh, what is going on at, uh, at my data, I think it could be also a good recruitment. Uh, uh, so, uh, so perfect. Very, very good. Uh, very good suggestion. Uh, we, we have a, a few minutes left, actually, three minutes left. Um, do, can we can we uh, have our four panelists uh, s saying in, in, in two sentences maybe what they well two uh, I know that with Charlie it will be more than two but <laughs> never mind um, uh, so I I explain in, in a few in, in, in really th thirty seconds to one minute uh, what you what you you thought about this uh, this uh, this workshop and and, and 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 how you see the the next steps. Maybe we can start with uh, Dorothy. Do, do you want to make our conclusion? Yes, yes, Eric. Um, first of all, I want to again say that I'm happy to be here. I think it's very useful connecting voices, different voices, especially the global majority. Uh, I joined without knowing what really a global majority really is uh, ending with the, with, the, with the knowledge of who we are. Uh, I'm happy to connect and hear all the different conversations and also um, identifying with the declaration, the my data declaration. I think it speaks to the to, to the issues that uh, we struggle with on a daily and also uh, issues that are really structured within the law. And therefore, I think it's important uh, that we move forward with the, with the declaration. Uh, in Uganda, we have different languages, but the, those key languages that I think uh, that my data declaration can be translated into for starters, and I, I commit to look out for translators in the, uh, in the at least one key language to be translated uh, for the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as, as, um, as, we, as we move forward the message, because 
translation is one of the issues. Translating our laws into local languages is one of the challenges that the country grapples with, even when it's a constitutional right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy, and thank you for your time uh, today. Uh, Marcel, your conclusion, please. Um, on my side, I think it was really um, a good and a nice experience to share with all the fellows and with uh, my colleague on, on the subject. It, it helped, I think we can see that we are all working hard together to, to make um, personal data a reality into the action of our government and the, and the citizen. And I'm certain that we'll continue the conversation after this around other subjects. So thank you so much. Absolutely, Marcel, we will. Uh, and thank you uh, also. Uh, Muchiri, can we have your conclusion? Um, I think for me, the value of having uh, more interdisciplinary conversations um, around around these issues, I think is uh, what can kind of come up for me um, as a real value for, for expanding the space, uh, a, a real value proposition for uh, my data Africa. Um, you know, just having people in the space coming from different views, different backgrounds, different thematic areas, who are you know seeing the elephant from their their perspective, I think it helps us move. Um, advance further than we would if we only had a single view, which sometimes tends to be the case mm -hmm. when we are in our cocoons. Yeah, you, you're very right. Thank you for this uh, philosophical note. Um, Charlie, do you want uh, to give us your conclusion? Charlie, we've lost Charlie. I'm always thinking, where is Charlie? But uh, sorry about that. Uh, OK, well, apparently, uh, he unfortunately dropped out. So I, I would like to, to thank Marlies, Ansku, and Victor from the My Data Global, the, the audience, uh, both physical and, uh, and online. And obviously, my, my dear friends and team members, uh, Jay, Ali, and, uh, and Dixon. And Dixon is already busy typing on the on the chat with all the follow-up that we will do so thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot for your participation and looking forward to discussing further very soon thank you goodbye thank you. From, uh, from thank Amsterdam. you Marcel, for coming bye. to uh, thank you. Bye. 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 bye bye thank you